from unmentionable parts turned into meals to a cheese that's popular despite its close relationship with maggots, here's some of the craziest creature foods from around the world. Silkworms. The UN published a report that noted by the year 2050, when there will be nearly 10 billion people on the planet, one-third of human protein intake will be comprised of insects. We don't know what percentage cockroaches make up, but we do know that silkworms will be the most heavily consumed, according to those estimates. Now, for thousands of years, silkworms have been taken advantage of for the coveted fabric that they produce, that being silk, of course. In many countries, the worms are already a popular treat. They're commonly fried in China and Vietnam, in Korea, they're seasoned and boiled. While it may not sound all that great, there are a lot of benefits behind consuming the critters. They're a rich source of protein, vitamins, and minerals. Silkworms require far less feed than other forms of protein, making them more economical. Astronauts have proposed cultivating the worms for sustenance on lengthy missions into outer space. So, if you have not already, get with the craze and enjoy a nice steaming hot cup of bondeji. It'll fill you up, and it's only a dollar. Rats. While authorities in New York City battled the growing population of invasive, disgusting rats, some of which can be the size of cats, people in parts of India, the Philippines, and Southeast Asia are including them as an essential and traditional part of the diet. In Vietnam and Thailand, they're stuck in their entirety on a stick and roasted. Meanwhile, in China, they're often found as the main ingredient in a dish, as seen here. Every March, the Adi tribe, who live in a remote village in northeast India, celebrate Onyang Aran, a festival in which rats are the culinary centerpiece. The tribe also makes a type of stew called Bule Bulak Oying, which includes rat's stomach, intestines, liver, tails, and legs, all boiled together with some seasoning. Nutria. Louisiana had a big problem starting in the late 1990s. The state's population of Nutria, these large, lovely rodents, were running around unchecked, and the numbers were growing out of control. As a result, their carcasses lined highways, quickly becoming the most common form of roadkill in the area. Scientists were especially concerned because the creatures liked to graze on the roots of marsh grass, destroying acres of fragile wetlands in the process. So the state started a plan to get people to eat them. More often. Sounds weird seeing as how they're roadkill and all, but as pointed out, the creatures are vegetarians, making their meat clean. And that flesh also has more protein in every average serving than ground beef and is also low in fat. Now, despite that push, Nutria remains a problem in Louisiana to this day. At this point, you may be wondering how they got there in the first place. Well, they were originally imported from South America in the 1930s for the fur. Production of Nutria fur was steady for years, peaking in 1976 with a total of 1.8 million pelts being prepared. But demand for fur started to plummet in the 1980s, so trappers had little incentive to continue hunting the monstrosities. And that's how the population became unchecked and their destructiveness on marshlands quickly became evident. Rocky Mountain Oysters. Rocky Mountain Oysters sound harmless enough, and as they are often deep fried, it is hard to distinguish their true nature. Well, we're here to tell you they are not oysters in any way. They're actually gonads, usually those of a bull, pig, or sheep. It's the food of cattle ranches in Spain, Argentina, and Mexico, as well as the American West, and all the way north to Western Canada, where the dish is commonly referred to as prairie oysters. Ranches in the Western United States are said to have come up with the delicious dish. Tarantula Salvation The people of Cambodia were overjoyed when, in 1953, they received independence from the tight grip of the French. The joy would be short-lived, however, as the region would be rife with violence in the form of civil wars and the Vietnam War. Finally, in 1975, communists led by Pol Pot would take control of the country, marching on the capital city, Phnom Penh, and forcing the 2.5 million residents to flee from the homes into the surrounding fields and wild, unchecked hillsides. Survival wasn't easy. 
and life was full of hardship and violence for these poor people. So they would turn to the endemic Thai zebra tarantula as a common source of protein. It makes sense because they are found in dens in thick forests. They're easy to prepare and totally safe to eat, taking only 10 minutes to capture, prepare, and serve. The spiders became an essential part of the people's survival. And while the brutal reign of Pol Pot came to an end in 1979, the tarantulas still remain popular as a food item throughout the country. More maggots, please. The more maggot-filled this cheese is, the more delicious it will taste, just so long as those maggots are alive. Now, this may sound counterintuitive, but it's the case according to those palates that regularly taste kazumazu, a traditional Sardinian cheese. Made from pecorino, the cheese is fermented to the point of decomposition. Larvae is then deliberately introduced to the cheese that breaks down its fat and makes it extremely soft. This larvae is visibly present in the form of small white worms. Now, if you think it's gross to eat Eat worms? Well, so do a lot of other people. The larvae can be removed by placing the cheese in a paper bag. The oxygen-deprived maggots jump in the bag, kind of like popcorn. When they're done popping, they're dead, and the maggot-free cheese can be eaten. Of course, there's plenty of people that do not do this and simply prefer the maggot-infested cheese instead. It is a head. Now, if you were looking at the thumbnail wondering if that was an animal's head on that plate, well, you know what? It most certainly is. A traditional dish in Iceland, svio, is a sheep's head cut in half with the fur and brain removed. Now, after that, it's boiled, and that seems to be about it. It's plopped on a plate with some side dishes, as it is here with mashed turnips and potatoes. As is the case with rats and those tarantulas in Cambodia, the dish was born as a function of necessity. Native Icelanders surviving in the harsh climate couldn't waste any part of a slaughtered animal. Kalkal. Now this is Greenland shark and it contains a lot of ammonia, so much so that first timers are told to pinch the noses when taking the first bite. It's very popular in Iceland where a cube of Hakal on a toothpick is followed by a shot of Brennivin, a local spirit there. Now Greenland shark meat is highly toxic, meaning that it must be fermented. This process involves hanging the Hakal to dry for months. Most palates cannot stomach the meat. Anthony Bourdain in particular called it the single worst, most disgusting, and terrible tasting thing he's ever eaten. Pufferfish. Well, you should know about the pufferfish by now. It's a creature that creates what have come to be known as underwater crop circles. Now, it's for this and one other reason that they've made it onto a few epic wildlife videos in the past. Their meat has the reputation of being both incredibly delicious and potentially lethal. Known as fugu, the food is considered a delicacy and is very expensive. Only trained, licensed chefs are allowed to prepare the meal. Despite this, deaths occur annually from ill-prepared fugu. Pufferfish contain a substance called tetrodotoxin which is as much as 1,200 times more poisonous to us than cyanide. Enough of this toxin courses through an average pufferfish to kill 30 fully grown adult human beings. And to top it all off, there is currently no known antidote. Octopus. Scientific evidence shows that octopuses experience pain, and it's for this reason that eating them while alive has become controversial. A common octopus dish is sanakshi, which is raw octopus cut into small pieces. Often, and sometimes preferably, depending of course on the diner, the arms are served still squirming posthumously, as if the thought of eating octopus was not exciting enough. Now, it could go through your body squirming and wriggling. That is one reason to always Chew your food thoroughly. 